and kia ora, and welcome to Married at First Sight New Zealand, Season 2, Episode 9, Recap. Well, we join the couples doing some home visits. Uh, Audie goes to Cromwell with Gareth, who still lives with his parents. Audie says his family home is warm and inviting, just like his family. Uh, Audie is worried about fitting into Gareth's close family environment. Gareth really wants her to get on with his family. His mom loves her. She thinks she's great. They ask about living arrangements. Of course, they still don't know. It's still early days. Adi worries about not wanting to have children. She knows that is a big thing for Gareth. Later, they go to a winery. Gareth asks her how she feels about the experiment. He says he's comfortable. She talks to him about the kid issue and hopes that won't be an issue for him and his family. Gareth says she was upfront from the beginning and that was cool. Of course, she seems to keep worrying that may later become an issue. Mm. She doesn't think that that is something they can compromise on. He says he isn't worried, but she is struggling with him making that choice at the age of 26. So I think it's more her freaking out about it than him. Anyway, off they go to Audie's house in Christchurch then. Uh, she has some interesting decor with some bugs and skulls and fun stuff like that. Later, they meet up with their friends and Audie invites them to grill him. Well, this may have proven to be a huge mistake. They ask him what is most important in a relationship, but instead of taking his answer of honesty at face value, they start to lash at him. What about loyalty? What about loyalty? Don't you think loyalty? All right. So he says, you can buy a dog for loyalty. Then things get really icy. Oh, girl. It's almost like Gareth felt insulted by the question, and maybe that's why things got awkward and he lashed out. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but her friend says she doesn't see them lasting. But I think this was all just because I think he just felt overwhelmed. And the, and they, he, they ask him questions, he gives his answers, and because they didn't seem to, they didn't like his answer, so they're going to basically beat the right answer into him, and he didn't like that. That's just how I saw it. All right, shall we talk about that, uh, the giant chaotic mess that is Wayne and Ksenia? Okay, let's do. Wayne didn't feel great about the home visit, so they came back to see the experts regarding their relationship. Ksenia tells the experts that Wayne has the problem, and he called, not her. Tony goes over there once for a relationship. Ksenia says she puts others first in a relationship. Of course, we haven't witnessed that, have we? So we don't really know. Tony points out a lot. Of miscommunication between them. Our other experts, uh, she says, comes right out and she says to Ksenia, it's uh, coming through loud and clear that you don't have feelings for Wayne. Ksenia dances around a bit. She says, uh, one box wasn't ticked, the X factor. She doesn't even want to sit on a beach and watch a sunset with Wayne. I mean, this is, what the hell? I just, woman, just like, what the hell kind of signals are you sending? You want all the hearts and bloody flowers, but, but, oh, I don't want to do, she doesn't want to do anything. I mean, that's how she comes off. She comes off as a giant bitch, and I'm tired of sitting here. I've been putting off, but I'm sorry, girl, you come off like a bitch. Maybe you need to sit back. Maybe you need to watch yourself, and maybe you need to see what, how you're treating other human beings. Maybe that's something you should do. Ugh, I'm sorry, but I've just had a gut full of this woman. I just, I can't even bloody stand her. I tried to give her a chance, but you know, it's like one minute you, you see, you know, it's like Wayne is bloody falling over backwards trying with this woman, and she just will not give him an inch. She does not give him anything. It's insane. She doesn't even want to sit on a beach with him. I mean, he's sitting there thinking, okay, well, that's romantic. I don't want to be romantic. Okay, well, why don't you go shove your head up your ass? How about that? Anyway, he says he wants to get the substance of her. I, honestly, I don't think there is any. The experts say they really mean they need to communicate better. Yeah, I don't think that's what they were saying. I'm honestly don't think in that. I'm no expert, but Cassini doesn't give an inch to Wayne, and I don't think she's funny. And quite honestly, I'm just going to say it. She's a bitch. Later, they meet up after time apart. Wayne says she looks nice, and then he asks Cassini if they can make it work. She says she took him pulling back as an insult. She asks, why did he stop complimenting her? He says he was complimenting her. And hello, when he first walked up, did he not say you look nice? Oh, did that, did she not hear that? Oh, 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 what did, because he didn't fall all over you? Because he didn't make you feel like you're some kind of freaking queen? 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting really upset here. <laughs> you know what? He pulled back because after he told her that he won the wife jackpot and she took offense to it, you know, he tried to clarify what she meant. But, you know, I don't think even she knows what the heck she means. But now she, you know, she says, well, it was like he was taking ownership. And then, you know, well, he doesn't compliment her. And he's like, he did. I mean, the first thing he did when he walked up to her was compliment her. So I'm sorry, but I just. <sighs> Deep cleansing breath. Try not to get too upset. <laughs> anyway, uh, he starts to get upset, just like me. And he needs to leave before he rants. So he gets up and he has to walk away, um, which I guess they'll get back and talk later. But I think we'll see that next time. But oh my gosh, this woman is just driving me bananas. I can't stand it. I need to take a drink of coffee. Mm. Girl. All right, so let's move on to Fraser and Monique because we know that's calming. <laughs> well, Fraser takes Monique home to meet his friends in Wellington. He feels quite positive. His friends ask her what she thought of their relationship, and she says it's good now after the shock, you know, of everything kind of wore off. He tells her after she sees his bedroom that they're going to stay in a hotel, which she is much relieved, and thank goodness, because there was just like a single bed on the floor. <laughs> Frazier, buy some big boy furniture, buddy. Anyway, they talk about post-experiment. They both talk about not having that zingy feeling, and he assures her it goes both ways. She hem a bit. She tries to find the right words. He says, I'm what you need, but not what you want. And I think in some ways, I think he, I think he hit the nail on the head. Um, his friends get right to the questions and ask if she has seen his pee pee. <laughs> she laughs. She says she's seen it, but they're waiting to see what happens after the experiment. Then they go to Monique's home. She catches up with her maid. She says he is a great communicator, but there's just, there's not that spark. Monique says they're really bad at Omer analyzing everything between the two of them. Uh, Frazier confesses to her guy mate, he's afraid he's going to get hurt. And he says he don't know if what they have is going to last. But, you know, it's still early days. And there's, I think they're still being shy about uh, maybe getting to know each other. But then again, we don't know. We don't see everything. On to Sam and Taylor. Well, Sam comes to meet Taylor's family and friends in Christ Church. Sam sees uh, some penis pasta in the pantry. Say that five times fast. Penis pasta in the pantry. And Sam isn't uh, impressed with Taylor's untidy wardrobe, which, yeah, it was untidy, but I have seen worse in my own uh, children's wardrobes when they were growing up. So I guess I'm unfazed. He's anxious to meet the flatmate, Tony. Um, Sam is smitten with Tony and his abs. And he asks Tony if he's single and is basically rendered speechless. <laughs> Sam then gushes to Taylor about Tony. But, you know, relax there, buddy, because Tony isn't gay. And Taylor says that he cannot swap. <laughs> uh, they end up going to, like, a confidence course type of thing. Uh, Taylor shows Sam he is quite capable and fit. Sam is actually surprised at how physical it was. Um, I thought the best part was when they zip line down or flying fox, whatever y'all call it, which I thought looked cool. Later, they meet up with Taylor's friends. Uh, Sam is quite open with Taylor's mates. Taylor knows he hasn't been as open, but he needs more patience from Sam because he doesn't want to screw this up. And onward to Dave and Julia, who are going to his home in Dunedin. She gives him some crap about packing all his stuff because, you know, he's got a lot. She says he is not a minimalist, but he has decent taste. He, she discovers his basement secret of the big drum set, and she doesn't seem to be impressed. Dave invites some guests over, and they all have chats. She again talks about the masculinity thing and admits she is struggling. His friends say once all this over, you will see his masculine side, which sort of, I think, surprised her. Dave talks to his sister about the real concerns. He says he thinks if he pushes too hard that she will really back away. And she's already freaking out a bit, so, you know, he doesn't want to push too hard. I don't understand, though, why so many of these guys are freaking out about sex. You know what? That is nobody's business but the couples, and they don't need to 
they don't need to keep acting like we expect them to do anything. And I don't know what Julie is thinking. That's not what you signed up for. None of us expects you to be getting busy. And if you do, we certainly don't need to hear the details. But she's wigging out about it. Anyway, they're having us chat on the at the beach. And, and uh, so it turns into basically a spat. Because he says, you know, he can't help the way she feels. But then she turns around and says, it's pressure. And he's like, it's not pressure. And he says, what it is, is the fact that you're not attracted to me. So that he thinks that is why they're not able to go to the next level. And I think in all honesty, I think he is correct in saying that. Because she doesn't feel that. So there's just nothing. She just doesn't even want to give it a try. And I, I don't know. Maybe she thinks that someone's got a wand or something. I don't know. We shall see. But again, none of us are expecting them to be getting busy, and we certainly don't need to hear about it, and she needs to stop putting that pressure on herself because no one's putting any pressure on her. Dave's not being putting pressure on her. She's in there saying she's having pressure on her, but no one's putting the pressure on her but herself. She needs to step back, take a deep breath, and relax a bit. And uh, I don't know. She's, she's just wigging out too much about this. I just think she needs to calm down. All right there then. Well, that has us all called caught up. Next time we're going to have, it looks like, a dinner party. Of course, you never know how they space it out. They say this is coming up, but it could be on, like, you know, the third show next week. So you just don't know. Because it's like, you know what, just give us an accurate depiction of what we're going to actually talk about instead of the next three shows. But, meh, I don't know. Maybe that's because they don't know how they're going to edit it. I don't know. But anyway, so next time we will have a dinner party and questions, which looks like it's going to start uh, getting a bit ouchier there with the, with the questions. And who knows? Will we see some people clashing? Um, my guess is probably, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps it up there. We've got everything caught up. So we will catch you up again for another Married at First Sight New Zealand Season 2 recap. Have a great one, everybody. We'll see you next time.